Selectman. And uh, the first order of business is to join in a Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance is to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, Thank you. The, uh, we have a very brief agenda tonight. This is a workshop meeting, so for the folks watching at home, we will not be engaging in public comment. That portion of the agenda uh, will resume at our next meeting uh, on the 26th. Um, the first item is uh, town administrator decision. Um, just to bring everybody up to date, that we had a series of interviews on Saturday with the three finalists for the Yarmouth Town Administrator position. And uh, it was a very full day. We started at 9, 8.30, 9 o'clock, and went till well into f well past 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock. So we had a full day. And uh, I want to thank um, our screening committee, uh, Mike Stone, Eric Tolley, uh, for all the work that they put into helping us pick three very strong candidates for the position of Town Administrator. Now, before I open it up for nominations on an administrator, I just wanted to see if board members have an interest in speaking at all about the process or any comments uh, in terms of the positives or the background of any of the candidates, or if you would just prefer go directly into an individual discussion with a nomination or a, a pitch for a particular candidate. So is it a strong feeling to talk about the process or go through each of the candidates? I come to this part of the agenda with no preconceived ideas. It's entirely up to you if you would like to have some preliminary discussion before we put that on the floor. Anyone? Okay. Hearing. Hearing that, I'm going to start with uh, Mr. Horgan. Okay. <laughs> um, Would you like to make a nomination? First of all, I, I too wanted to say thank you to Eric and to Michael. Um, I know how hard Saturday was, so I can imagine how much work you guys put in behind the scenes, and we really appreciate that. Uh, and also a huge thanks to Pat and to other staff members here who made uh, our Saturday more tolerable. Um, on Saturday, I thought all of three candidates were really very impressive. Um, one of the things I was looking for right away was address. You know, uh, I think it's, you know, it's been um, a concern of ours that we wanted somebody that would be somewhat proximate to our town, um, someone that could be um, available um, to us. And so um, two, two of our candidates uh, fulfilled that requirement. The um, the first gentleman, Mr. Whitnauer, um, I listened carefully. I actually listened carefully to all three of them, but then I went back over the weekend again and watched it and really took notes. And you know, Mr. Whitnauer um, really checked an awful lot of the boxes for me. He um, he worked in uh, Falmouth, which is a town that's almost identical to Yarmouth. Um, he had great experience with uh, two different wastewater projects. He's uh, familiar with the seaside community, a, a tourism type of economy. Um, I really liked um, his inclusiveness. Um, you know, the, the idea of sitting down with people and listening um, before taking any kind of drastic action. And the fact that um, he saw himself as kind of a mentor. Um, I think we have some great staff people here and I would love to see them be able to progress a little bit further if they, if they choose to. And I think he'd be a really nice um, mentor for some of our staff people should they decide um, to pursue that kind of course. Um, I was impressed also by his tenure in the different towns. Um, I think he did like 10 years in the, the towns that he was involved with. He's probably the one candidate that we have that has an enormous amount of experience. Um, three different towns, town manager, 10-year stints in each. Um, and again, 
you know, Falmouth, Martha's Vineyard. Um, when I looked at all the types of things that I was looking for in a, a town manager, he really seemed to check most of the boxes for me. Um, and he, what was really interesting was, you know, he talked about things that you wouldn't expect a town manager to talk about. Uh, he talked about daycare. When's the last time you heard a manager talk about daycare and the concern that it is for a community? Um, he talked about not only the fact that we're stuck in COVID right now, but you know the fact that uh, not to be forgotten is the opioid crisis that we have going on. And um, you know it was that type of of mentality that um, I was really appreciative of. Um, and he said something that struck me. Um, right away, which was, um, I'm trying to remember the exact phrase, it was, he talked about emotional intelligence. I thought that was, that's such a, um, a key phrase when you talk about working cooperatively with other people. There's a lot of books that have been written on it, and I was impressed that he was versed in that type of um, um, mentality, I guess it's in order to understand how other people communicate and how best to work with them. It, it, it struck me as a really great quality for a town manager to have informed himself of. So, um, you know, I could look to all three of the candidates and spend a half an hour listing all the positives that I heard from them. But um, proximity, experience, uh, demeanor, I found Mr. Whitnauer to be probably the strongest of the three candidates. Okay, so are you making a motion to um, for the board to consider Mr. Whitnauer as our next town administrator? I'm happy to make it, but uh, all right, yeah, I'll make a motion. We can continue the conversation. Okay. Um, I'd like to, let me just point out another item that I think we should, regardless of who ends up, I think. The appointment should be made, obviously, subject to contract, negoti sure, uh, contract negotiations. Uh, I know other towns look for a background check um, just to see if there's something serious potentially that we have, yeah. you know, that we're probably unlikely to see, but I think that should be a condition as well unless anybody has an objection. So you're making that nomination subject to those conditions. Yes, I am, so Mr. Chairman. I'll second it. Okay, so we got a motion and a second. Let's have some discussion about this. So. Mike, you seconded it. What's your? Um, I agree with pretty much what Dan said. I mean, what's important to me um, is person's overall qualifications, and, and he has a master's in public administration, which, which very few of our candidates did have. Um, two out of the three we interviewed had a an MPA degree, but believe it or not, most of the resumes we got, people didn't have that uh, education, and I think it's important. But moreover, um, if anything stands out from Mr. Wittenauer's resume, and one of the candidates was asked for, you know, what one word would I would identify you, and he came up with a good answer, which was integrity. I think that was Mr. Power. Uh, Mr. Wittenauer wasn't asked that question, but if he, if he, if I was asked that question in terms of my impression of him based on his interview and based on his resume, it would be commitment. The man has demonstrated 30 years, close to 30 years of commitment to public service as a town administrator, and his average tenure is somewhere around 10 years. When you think about it, and, and um, you know, you don't get that today with candidates. You, you, you're lucky if you get five, and, and I'm not saying that critically with Dan or anybody else. But um, if you look at Bill and Dan together, Bill left. I think once he hit 65, after about four and a half years, Dan had four years, so it's like eight and a half years. So, Whitnauer's tenure and his average job position is more than our experience in, of two candidates um, since Bob Lawton left. He's, he's local, he knows the issues, he knows the, he has the political connections. He was very instrumental in the um, Cape Cod Municipal Health Group 
which was a consortium um, of 54 member organizations that, that has saved um, um, not only Yarmouth, but all the other towns that, that are a party to it, millions of dollars. He's con he, continu he continuously is on the board and was able to report to us that there's not going to be any increases. That's a volunteer position, by the way. That's something he does over and above his, um, his normal job responsibilities. I think he's very strong in fiscal management. He described himself as a fiscal conservative. And given the um, dynamics of our population, we're not a wealthy community. Um, we've always taken a conservative budget approach. We want to maximize services, but we want to hold the line um, on, on tax increases uh, and stay within two and a half. Um, I think he is that kind of fiscally conservative manager. Um, his recommendations that we got were good. His job performances that he sent to us were superlative. He he scored in the in, in the highest score in every every category in in the um, performance job evaluations he got on uh, I don't, at Oak Bluffs. Um, the towns, Dan mentioned, comparable towns. Um, some of the, the, the other candidates, the towns they've been involved in are considerably smaller than the town of Yarmouth. And, and I think size and complexity, although there's not a one-to-one -one correlation, there certainly is a correlation. And Falmouth is a larger town than um, Yarmouth is. It's the second largest town in the Cape. Mashpee is roughly equivalent in size to Dennis. And obviously, Oak Bluffs falls out of that comparable range because it's a smaller town. But he's had about 20 years' experience in, in major, major towns on Cape Cod. These towns have all had stable bond ratings, and the management aspect of the bond uh, reports has been good. Um, he's been a project manager of, of capital projects exceeding $200 million. Um, he has collective bargaining experience, which I think is very important, and in fact has taught collective bargaining at Anna Maria College. Um, wh one of the things I liked about him was he, he was accommodating, um, as far as staff was concerned, he had developed a couple of uh, uh, town managers that he mentioned, one of whom was um, Liz Sullivan in, in, in Venice. Um, but at the same time, he said, you can't shy away from conflict. We asked, especially my questions, I, I wanted to see a candidate that wasn't going to say everything is rosy all the time if it's not. Somebody who's going to deal effectively with management problems if they existed, if there were department heads that were kind of doing their own thing and not following within the larger enterprise of, of um, uh, the town management structure, and, and he, he said you can't wish away conflict. You have to deal with it, and if you don't deal with it, it can become worse. So I think he's a mentor on one hand, but I think also he's someone that will address problems as they arise and straighten them out before they become greater problems, and he'll, he'll know how to herd people back in when he has to do that. So those are just some of the um, highlights of, of what I thought about him. Um, I think he, um, he's got about 29 years. He's lived on Cape Cod, so he, he knows the area very, very well. I think the regional issues, all town managers that have been here for any length of time know what they are. Uh, water quality, uh, jobs, affordable housing. I mean, he was familiar with really all of the needs of the Cape in general, um, which by definition includes the major issues that Yarmouth is facing. So I don't think there'd be, um, he'll need any time to get up to speed. I think he'll need a little bit of time to learn the nuances of this particular organization. Um, but he just brings a lot of knowledge with him that will be germane to the issues here in, in Yarmouth. So um, I think he's the strongest candidate out of the three, um, and I'm happy to endorse his candidacy. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Um, Tracy, Tracy Post. 
Well, I want to thank uh, Mike and Eric as well. Um, Eric's comment previously about the embarrassment of riches, I think it's called. Um, we were fortunate to have three good candidates, so um, that I'm grateful for. Each of them had their strengths. Um, I think Mr. Kreidler was um, extremely energetic, um, very charismatic, and um, did a lot of research, a lot of homework on our community, which I was very, very impressed with. Um, I think Mr. Powers was an extremely great communicator and team builder and um, is local. And I think he would be um, also a great uh, town administrator. Um, you know, I'm not going to reiterate the things that you said about Mr. Wittenauer. Those are all, I believe, true. I think he's tried and tested, and I think he would be a, a fine, all of them would be a fine fit, but uh, Mr. W Mr. Wittenauer would be a fine fit for our community. Very good. Eric? Uh, thank you. Um, I, for one, enjoyed Saturday. I, uh, <laughs> I dreaded it going in, knowing that it was going to be a very long day, but um, you know, that's the kind of work I like to do. I like to sit, I like to listen, I like to talk. I don't like to get sidetracked by tangents and other things that can happen um, in other types of settings. So, so Saturday was an enjoyable day for me, and I, I really uh, enjoyed listening to all three candidates I thought they were all great candidates, obviously. Um, otherwise, Mike and I would not have selected them to, to come before you as finalists. And uh, I agree with um, all the things that have been said by Dan and Mike and Tracy. Um, I don't really have anything much beyond that to add. I think uh, however this goes, uh, we'll be in fine shape. So that's all I have. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Eric. Um, well, I, too, think we, we, we benefited from having three strong candidates, and I was, quite frankly, surprised at how fast the day went. Um, over the weekend, as you know, they, I asked the candidates to submit some information. Everything that I got, I shared with other board members. Um, I reviewed the financial management review information that I received. Um, the standard and poor ratings of performance and management. Um, I had the ability to talk to some references and I reached out to the Department of Revenue and I also tried to identify former employees that I could speak with. So, um, And uh, today was a very, very interesting conversation as well with uh, a former employee, actually a former employee of Mr. Rittenauer's. And um, she's an assistant town administrator on Kit Cod. And um, she was telling me today that she thought that her experience with Bob Rittenauer uh, was perhaps the most important um, factor in terms of her professional development. That all the accolades that she gets as an assistant, all the work that she's done, all the success that she's had, was largely because of the mentorship. And uh, I agree when we look at candidates for a position like this, you're looking for experience, you're looking at education, you're looking at their ability to manage finances and budget and everything else. But I do think in Yarmouth that there is another factor that is very, very important, and that is the ability to relate and to develop staff. Because um, Yarmouth has an enormous amount of talent here. And I think that becomes a factor that sort of um, takes on more, much more significance these days. So for that reason, I, too, um, in, in support the motion that's on the floor. And uh, I do believe uh, quite confidently that Bob Rittenauer will be an outstanding uh, town administrator and will serve this town uh, quite well. So are there any other comments, thoughts? So I'm going to call for a, uh, a, a vote. Uh, all those in favor of Robert Rittenauer as the next Yarmouth Town Administrator, obviously subject to contract negotiations and background check, uh, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? 
Any abstain? The vote's unanimous. So um, I think we deserve a round of applause. Well, I think for the staff, for the time, for the work, and for the energy, I think uh, a lot of work has gone into this. And I can't, like I said, I can't thank Mike and Eric enough. I was applauding because it's over. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Well, it's not completely over. Uh. We do have an item on the agenda. And uh, we have not lost sight of the fact that um, members of this board have actually been through this multiple times. And uh, we need to select a uh, contract negotiating committee. And um, uh, I'm, I'm looking for nominees. I know in the past I've, uh, I've encouraged uh, Mr. Tolley and uh, Mr. Stone to consider taking on the assignment. But I'm open up to other people or other nominations. Any? And there's no. I'll nominate Mike Stone because yeah, I think his legal background is covered. Okay. Well, we need two. So, Mike, you want to make another one? Anybody but me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Tracy, would you like to? Would I think Eric and Mike, as long as he's willing to do it, have done. I don't know, Dan. What do you think? Do you think they did a good job? <laughs> I think I think they both did a great job. I I would love to see the two of them. To, I know they, it's a they, lot, but they know they put a lot of work in. They put a lot of time in. I guess my question is 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 uh, are they willing? Mr. Stone, are you willing if nominated and uh, voted? Would you? Yeah, I, I think with all the redrafting and all the um, updating that went into the last contract is going to make you know the draftsmanship uh, not a big deal it's going to be sitting down with the candidate and addressing issues such as salary and vacations health insurance mm -hmm. I don't think that should take a whole lot of work hopefully it won't um, well I think if, I think if you two take it on I think you guys will do a great job it'll happen very very smoothly so what do you say, Eric? <laughs> he had told me I was going to have to do this three times in my <laughs> tenure, whereas the, the 40 years' worth of people before me didn't ever have to do it. <laughs> mm. I, I will, uh, yes. All right. Uh, I'll second that. All right. So we have a nomination of Mike Stone and Eric Tolley to handle the contract negotiations for the board. Um, so all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carries unanimously. So let's... So we've dispensed with that item. Uh, the next item on the agenda is, um, is an opportunity for the Yarmouth Board of Selectmen to acknowledge and to thank uh, Dan Kanapik, who has been with us for quite some time and has accomplished a great deal. He has left the town of Yarmouth in a much better place than he came and found it. Um, we're in a strong position financially. We've made huge uh, um, strides in terms of energy conservation, in terms of being a green community. Uh, we've made progress on wastewater. We've made projects on progress on a host of other projects. We're in the midst of a visioning process to help shape the, the long-term future uh, for our community. Uh, I could go on and on, but um, it's a pretty impressive list of things that Dan Kanapik has accomplished here for the town of Yarmouth. And I and I know other mem the, the rest of the board want to uh, have a moment to, to thank you, Dan, for everything that you've done for this community. Um, it's a proud record, and it's a strong record, and, uh, and we thank you. So I'm going to give a chance for other board members to weigh in. Um, I'm going to go around the table like I have been. I'm going to ask uh, Dan if you'd like to say a few words. Um, needless to say, I'm the newest member on the board, so I really haven't, unfortunately, had as much time with you as the others have. Um, I think what impressed me right away is your willingness to sit down with me and uh, just kind of walk me through uh, so much of the process that um, I had either forgotten or never knew about. So um, I I know as uh, town moderator, um, you made things very easy. Uh, the town meetings went very smoothly because they were prepared well. Um, we dealt with some very difficult times in town meetings and some difficult issues. And uh, you put in the work uh, behind the scenes to make sure that um, all the hard work had been done behind the scenes so that people understood what the issues were and what their import was. Um, I am sorry to see you go, and I just wish you every good um, thing to happen in your life going forward, in your career. Um, 
I know it's been a, a bit of a challenge being here uh, away from your family, um, but um, we appreciate the sacrifice. But at the same time, um, really want you know nothing but the best for you going forward, and um, you and your family. And uh, I'm just extremely grateful for the example of leadership and mentorship that you've shown me. Thank you, Mr. Stone. <coughs> Dan, I was thinking when we were interviewing on Saturday um, how fast the last four years have gone by. It, it was uh, kind of a nostalgic moment looking back and the time when you, you would come in and, and with another candidate about four years ago, and Jim Cork was the chairman at that time. Um, I remember you coming from Westfield, and, and there's a number of adjustments you had to make. One was be from being a mayor to a town administrator, which I don't think is an easy adjustment and w not one everybody can make. And the other was acclimating yourself to the community. And I saw, you know, a slow but steady progression, and, and then you kind of took off with it, and um, it was as if you had always been here. So um, you, you learned the job well, you, you performed well, all your performance evaluations um, were very good. Um, and I want to thank you for your service to this community. I want to wish you and your family the very best, especially the boys um, <laughs> who were a lot younger when you first came. Uh, <laughs> and and um, I hope you'll stay in touch with us and let us know how you're doing. Tracy? Four years does go by fast. So I, I want to thank you personally, but also on behalf of uh, the people of Yarmouth. I know you've made a lot of connections in your time here. And uh, because of COVID, many of them aren't, aren't able to come in person and be able to see you and thank you. But I know if they could, they would. There were a lot of people you touched in your time. A lot of issues that, uh, you know, I thought about you a lot on Saturday as well because, you know, all plans are great until the day in, day out come. And the things that you've seen uh, in your time here, the tornadoes, the flood of oh this yeah. building, mm. the sharks, <laughs> I mean, COVID, <laughs> all of the things when you're on a, uh, when you're on one trajectory every day and, and something else happens and you're putting out the fires, it's, it's not an easy job, Dan, and I recognize that, but you've done a very, very good job. And um, I'm very appreciative for all your hard work, and I do wish you the best in whatever comes uh, in your future. Thank you. Thank you. Eric. Uh, I'll just say, Dan, thank you for uh, giving Yarmouth four years of your life. Um, despite you calling me a prickly pear, I'm sure I wasn't your biggest challenge on this board. <laughs> 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 but... Uh, no, I, I do appreciate all that you've done, the sacrifices that I'm sure you've made um, with family, and especially I, I, I can certainly relate to having two young boys at home and, um, you know, having other time commitments that take you away from them for sure. But, uh, you know, we have seen a lot in the four years that you've been here, as, uh, as Tracy mentioned, and, and I think that you and... Um, Rich Bienvenu, who, who uh, both of wh whom are going to be gone, are uh, are really to be given a lot of credit for um, mobilizing the efforts towards um, wastewater. And um, you know, I, I really give you a lot of credit for getting us to the point that we are at now um, on that front. So I think um, you know, I'll, I'll always remember you as the guy who uh, who really got that going. But you know. You, like others have said, you know, you, you've done a lot of hard work, tackled a lot of challenges, and uh, I do appreciate it, and uh, I wish you a lot of luck in your future endeavors. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. Now, we do have a gift uh, to present to you, but before I do that, I want to give you a chance to uh, make any observations or comments that you would like, Dan. First, I'd like to thank uh, Mike, Tracy, and Eric because they were on the board when I came here, and that was um, I came in a time when the, the town was in a tough spot. Uh, I remember that day four years ago interviewing, and uh, you know, as 
as you go through the list of challenges that were in front of the town, you almost start to talk yourself out of the job, potentially, you know? <laughs> and, uh, but going through that process, that was a pretty rigorous process. And, um, and it ended up to a point where I can say that uh, we hit every challenge that we could head on, mm. you know? And there were a lot of uh, what I'd call significant interruptions with the daily mission that took place. Uh, certainly uh, in my own career, the memory of the first phone call I got from Frank Fredrickson on the day Sean Gannon was killed mm -hmm. will stick with me forever. You know, the uh, barrage of uh, snowstorms in March of 2018, two town hall floods, <laughs> then the tornadoes, and then, of course, the granddaddy of them all, COVID-19. But, uh, you know, for all of the nice things that you've said about me, none of them could have happened without the very fine staff that you have here. And one of the things that I, I knew early on going into this is the town was extremely well positioned for great success. And uh, it just needed somebody to uh, take the helm and channel all that resource. And we've had a lot of great folks come in along the way. And, uh, and I always would say this to people, that the staff here in Yarmouth, second to none, absolutely fabulous. And, uh, you know, I think of all the things where this community is now today versus where it was talking about in 2016 and 2017, uh, the lion's share of that is on the back of the staff that uh, got us there. So it was a total team effort. I'm going to miss all uh, the staff. Uh, we've had a great relationship. Um, and I could tell you uh, that uh, I'm glad I did this kind of job, uh, but it's not really the kind of job that I'd have. Uh, I look at. I know Bob Rittenauer personally, and, and I would look at guys like that or Bob Law, and, and it's like, geez, I don't know how you guys do that for 30 years. It's a humongous commitment. And I think you all know I was a little bit darker <laughs> <laughs> yeah. before I came here. We but, didn't want to uh, say that, but uh, no, it's true yeah. though. It's uh, but I will say the townspeople have been fabulous. Uh, mm. Accepted me as one of their own. Own and I had a, a chat the other day with Jack McCormick, and I always would tell Jack that he was like the first person that I met when I was here. He was on part of the TV crew back in the day, and uh, whether it was the boards or the commissions or the moderator. Everybody has accepted me as one of their own, and uh, it's been a great career stop, but it definitely is time for me to go on. And I got two teenage boys. You weren't too many years from where I am, you know, and uh, you know what it's like, and I'm looking forward to the next chapter. But uh, but certainly I want to thank everybody for the opportunity provided here. It's been uh, it's been a great personal experience for me. And uh, and I'm, I'm looking forward to reading the Times. There's a few big things left to go. I know you're going to do it. Yep. And I know the uh, town is well positioned for a very successful rest of the 21st century, and I'm glad to be able to have been able to be a very small part of that. But uh, it's a great town, a lot of great things on the horizon. Good luck to you. And uh, and I think you made a fine choice tonight. Uh, like I said, I've known Bob for a number of years, and I've always marveled at how he gets to work every day. I don't know if he went into a little bit of that story, but, you know, anybody that <laughs> goes to work every day like he goes to work, that's uh, that says something about Commitment, Mike, is that the word? Right? You know, that's uh, that guy's, uh, he's had a, a quite a challenge in his career. So good luck. And I appreciate all the kind words you said. So thank you. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Um, maybe uh, do you, if you could just approach, oh, the, sure. approach the bench. And uh, we'll mask up. And uh, we'll present to you. This is a gift, a token of our appreciation. There's also a card inside. Um, and uh, you know what I'd like to do is at least make sure that we at least get a camera shot of all of us together. All right. I know we'll probably be vi violating every COVID rule in the book, but let's stand out in front of the table here. And I'm going to present this to you. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll mute that part of this. But if we could get, I don't know, Pat. If you
supermarket is in the supermarket where it's getting its ready to go to town. How about that, huh? Yeah. 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 We're making inroads. That's great. So well, thank you. Well, well, that's well a nicer do. Well, that's what I told the people that were eating. I'm like, you only knew. Well, unless there's any other business, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second.